Hi, this is Nick from Tilta. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Nucleus Nano 2. The Nano 2 is a brand new wireless lens control system with an increased focus on external control, both for cameras and gimbals. The Nano 2 is going to be a great option for anyone who's just getting their first camera and they need the modern conveniences of a wireless lens control system. It's also going to be great for existing users of the Nucleus M and Nano as it is fully compatible with both of those systems. Lastly, it's going to be a perfect option for anyone who is working with a more high-end system that needs a lightweight and affordable backup unit. So to start, we're going to take a look at what is included with the base kit of the Nucleus Nano 2. When you first open up the unit, you'll find the hand unit, the motor, as well as a USB-C power cable. And underneath this main tab, you'll find a photographic lens ring adapter a 15 millimeter rod as well as a 15 millimeter rod holder and an allen key for mounting the rod and round holder so you might be thinking that the components included in this kit are fairly similar to the original nano however the majority of the changes do rest in the hand unit itself with the new touchscreen display as well as the three motor control with an expanded handle this unit is now much more capable than the previous version the camera control is going to allow you to control camera settings via USB-C, Wi-Fi, and Bluetooth. And it's also going to have some compatibility with the DJI Ronin series of gimbals, that being the RS2 and the RS3 Pro. The motor itself now uses USB-C, and it uses two USB-C ports, allowing you to pass power through to multiple motors while also having significantly more port than the original Nano. First thing you'll notice will be the 1.6 inch touchscreen display. This is going to be how you select most options on the unit itself. Uh, right next to that, you'll find a record button, which can also be used to power the unit or send run stop through USB-C and, and for some compatible cameras, also Wi-Fi. Uh, next to that, you'll find a zoom toggle, which can be used to control a motor. This can be used to control either zoom, focus, or iris. It can be si assigned to whatever function you'd like. Uh, next to that, you'll find the function button, which is going to serve as a way to calibrate the motors as well as to set marks. Moving along the side, you'll find a switch that switches between TF and DF, similar to some of our handles for the ring grip. This is going to allow you to spin the unit infinitely if needed to adjust sensitivity or from using an accessory like the DJI focus motor. When using with the nucleus motor, you'll want this just in the normal TF section. On the inside, you have a NATO rail mount. Uh, a couple features of that would be the contact pins, which is how the unit can draw power with compatible accessories. Please do not slide the hand wheel onto a NATO rail as this can damage the pins. On the far side, of the unit, you'll find a USB-C port. This can be used to charge and power the internal battery. Please note the internal battery has an operating temperature of 14 degrees Fahrenheit to 140 degrees Fahrenheit. This can also be used for firmware updates if you are not updating through Wi-Fi. And lastly, you have the hand wheel control itself. This can be mapped to any motor, most likely focus, but also iris and zoom if needed. So that was a brief overview of the physical features of this unit. Next, we're going to take a look at the motor. All right, so looking at the motor, we're going to go over a couple of the key features. Uh, the first one being the motor driver, which is going to be offset from the main gearing, allowing the motor to not as easily push away from the lens during use. Uh, next to that, you'll find the two USB-C ports, which can be used to power the motor, as well as pass through power to additional motors. Uh, above that, you'll find the motor gearing, which is 0.8 pitch, and it's going to physically connect to your lens in order to move the focus distance. Um, right below that, you'll find an LED indicator, which will show a few different colors, signaling what function the motor is currently assigned to. Next to that is a pairing button, which can be used to pair the motor to the hand unit as well as calibrate the motor. And at the bottom, you'll find the mount for a 15 millimeter rod as well as the tie down to secure the motor to a rod. We're now going to take a look at the user interface of the Nano 2 hand wheel. Starting on the main page up at the top, you have your wireless channel indicator currently set to channel 9. You have your Wi Fi status symbol. You have your battery information, Bluetooth status, record and standby indicator, as well as your three motor parameters for zoom, focus, 
and iris, all currently set to zero. You have the focus knob range, which is indicated with the circle in the center of the UI. You have your set mark button down at the bottom, as well as your screen lock button. You have two arrows signaling additional settings, and then you have your autofocus to manual focus switch button. Swiping over to the next screen, you'll find a camera setting lock button up at the top, standby record indicator, as well as recording time. F-stop, shutter speed, ISO, white balance, and your resolution, data rate, and frames per second. And at the very bottom, you'll find your protocol information. On the last page, you'll find your current focal distance, the brand of lens, the model of lens, f-stop information, and focal length information. And then in the same position as the other screen, you have your A and B mark setting button, uh, just with a different indicator. You can swipe twice more to return to the home screen. Now we're gonna take a look at how to set up the system for the very first time. So we're gonna start the assembly process with the motor. Uh, we're gonna connect the motor via a 15 millimeter rod and we're going to line it up with the gear ring on our lens and then tighten the motor in place with the tie down. From there, we're gonna look at a few different options we have for powering the motor via the included USB-C to USB-C cable. So I'm going to connect this into port number two. Keep in mind, both port one and two are inputs, but only port one is an output, meaning if you need to chain together multiple motors, you will need to leave port one open. So a few different options we have, uh, one of which would be our universal power bank holder. This is gonna allow you to mount an external battery pack via quarter 20 to your camera cage or similar system. Uh, and you can see the motor has power as the red and white light is blinking, signaling that the motor needs to be calibrated. Another option, would be our F970 battery plate, which also has USB-C and allows you to power the motor via a swappable Sony uh, F970 or 570 battery. Another option would be using the USB-C of a battery plate, such as our smart V-mount battery plate. This is going to be convenient as it'll give you a PD USB-C output, allowing you to provide a bit more torque to the motor itself. And lastly, we have our PD power handle, which is convenient as it also gives you a way to operate your camera uh, while including an internal battery that can provide a USB-C PD output. So those are just a few different options you have. However, we also have USB-C to PTAP as well as a variety of other ways to power the system. Next, we're going to take a look at how to pair the hand unit to the motor. We're now going to pair the hand unit to the main motor. We can do so by swiping up on the main screen and then selecting the connect option and then 2.4G and then channels. This will show us a list of all available channels, which the unit will automatically connect to the cleanest. If we need to remove a specific channel, we can do so by tapping it. If we need to invert the selection and only pick a handful of channels, we can use the invert key. And if we need to reselect all of the channels, we can use the all. Key. If you have one specific channel that you'd like to connect to, you can press the icon in the top left corner to select to that one individual channel. For this case, we'll use auto to find the cleanest channel and then press search. We can then double tap the pairing button on our motor and we'll see a few different options appear. All we need to do is press confirm for it to select the cleanest option. And we're now connected to the motor and ready to calibrate. And then once connected, we can then press the pairing button once to change the color. Green will signify that the motor is selected to iris. Blue will signify the motor is connected to zoom. Yellow will signify the motor is connected to other or unassigned. And purple will signify the motor is connected to focus. To calibrate the motor, you can do so through the hand unit. To calibrate the motor from the hand unit, you can hold down the function button, and after three seconds, it will automatically calibrate all motors or by holding the pairing button on the motor itself. And then once assigning and calibrating your motor, it should be ready to control. 
So when you're using a lens without hard stops, the process is going to be very similar. You're going to run the auto cal as you did before. However, the motor should stop after 15 seconds of not hitting any hard stop. After that, we can manually calibrate the lens by swiping up from the home screen and selecting motor, focus, and manual cal. We can start the calibration process, and then we can use the wheel to turn the motor until the lens reaches minimum focus. Press confirm, and then rotate the wheel until the lens reaches infinity. Press confirm. Return to the home screen, and you're now ready to use your lens without hard stops. A situation you may find yourself in is when you spin the wheel and the physical limitations of the wheel do not line up with the firmware limitations, meaning you may hit 999 on the firmware, but the wheel still has room to travel. We can fix this by going into the main menu and selecting settings, and then using the calibrate knob feature. We can press calibrate to begin. We can follow the prompts, spinning the wheel all the way to the left before pressing confirm, and spinning the wheel all the way to the right before pressing confirm. Confirm one more time, and then the home button to return to the main screen, and you can see the physical limitations of the wheel now align with 999 on one end and zero on the other. All right, we're now going to take a look at how to set marks on the Nano 2 hand unit. This is useful when you're trying to mark a subject at a specific focal distance. You can do so by single pressing the function button, and you'll notice the mark appears on the UI, and then you'll get some haptic feedback when you reach that point. To delete these, you can double tap the function button, and you also have the option of setting a mark with the A and B button on the UI. Very similarly, single tap to set, and then double tap to delete. If you need to set a specific range for the focus motor to reach but not to exceed, you can hold the A and B button and then rotate to select a range, single tapping to lock that range into place. This is useful if you have a quick focus throw or if you have a move where you do not want the focus motor to exceed a certain distance. This can then be deleted by holding the A and B button on the UI. On the lens profile screen, you have the same options in terms of single pressing the function key to set marks, and then double tapping to delete. And then you also have the A and B button on the UI. It does appear a little bit different on this screen. However, it serves the same function in terms of setting marks. Double tap to delete and then hold to set an A and B range. Single tap to confirm. You've now limited the range that the unit can go. We're now gonna take a look at some of the sub menus within the additional settings menu. This can be accessed by swiping up from the main menu and selecting settings. At the top, you'll see an option for calibrating the knob, which is what we used previously. And just below that, you have an option to adjust the brightness of the unit. This can also be adjusted automatically by selecting auto. Below that, you'll see the setting for knob, which can be used to assign a different focus motor to the main control dial of the unit and can also be used to reset it to default settings. And under that, you'll see the same option for the zoom rocker, allowing you to control the zoom focus or iris motor from the rocker on the unit itself. You have an option for vibration, which can be enabled or disabled, as well as has adjustable strength. And lastly, you have a standby mode, which can be turned on and off and will allow the unit to go to sleep after a certain time frame of being inactive. The next submenu we'll take a look at is System, where you have the option to see information regarding the unit, such as the firmware and runtime. 
Below that, you'll have an option to change the language of the unit between English and Chinese, as well as an option to update the firmware and import custom lens information. You can adjust the rotation of the screen for different mounting options, as well as reset the unit to factory settings. The next menu we're going to take a look at is the motor menu, which will have some options in relation to the motors. We'll select focus as an example, and you can see you have the option to automatically calibrate the motor as well as to manually calibrate the motor if using a photo lens. You can adjust the torque of the motor as well as have a reminder of what color and motor number the motor is currently assigned to. You can adjust the direction that the motor spins as well as the sensitivity, which is how responsive the motor is going to be. We recommend keeping this higher. And you have the same options for the iris, zoom, and the other motor. The last submenu we're going to take a look at is the connect menu, which will find the 2.4G option that we use to connect the hand wheel to our motor. Below that, you'll also see an option for power, which is going to allow you to adjust the transmission power of the hand unit. This is useful when the hand unit is mounted physically farther away from the motor. Below that, you'll find Bluetooth, which you can use to connect the unit to your camera system, and it functions very similarly to the Bluetooth in your phone. You also have the option to connect to Wi-Fi which again functions similarly to a cell phone or computer, allowing you to connect to the internet for firmware updates. And below that, you'll find an option for connecting various camera systems to the unit. Now we're going to take a look at how to pair the Nano 2 hand wheel with two Nano 2 motors. So to start, we're going to power both motors. Then on the hand wheel, we're going to swipe up Select Connect, 2.4G, and Channels. You can do this either manually or automatically. We're going to do manual uh, channel one for this example. Press Search. And then on the motors themselves, we're going to double tap the Function button. From there, both motors should appear. We can press Confirm. And as you can see, the motors are now paired and both set to focus. We can change what this motor is set to. By pressing the function button, blue would be set for zoom. Now we're going to take a look at the menu of the control handle. We're now going to take a look at the menu of the control handle for the Nano 2. This can be accessed by triple pressing the power button. You can use the M key as enter, the record key as back, and the joystick to navigate. So to start the wireless menu, you'll find easy mode, which will allow you to connect to nucleus motors or DJI gimbals. You'll also find 2.4G. You'll see an option mode, which will allow you to adjust the transmission strength of the system between low, medium, and high, as well as an option to directly change the channel that the handle is set to. Below that, you'll find motor. This is going to have some settings relating to both the focus dial and the joystick. You'll see the option for direction, which will allow you to change the direction the focus dial is set to between clockwise and counterclockwise. You'll be able to assign the motor number to the focus dial, whether that's motor number one or the purple LED. Motor number two, or the green LED, three, or the blue, four, or the orange. You also see an option for setting A and B points. All you'll need to do is find your A point, press enter, find your B point, press enter, and this will be held until enter is pressed a third time. You'll see the option AutoCal, which will automatically calibrate any connected lens. Manual Cal, which will allow you to manually calibrate a lens by finding the first position, pressing Enter, finding the second position. 
you'll see the same options for the joystick. Below that, you'll find function. This will allow you to manually calibrate the focus wheel. I'm going to turn this all the way to the left, press enter, and all the way to the right, press enter. You can also calibrate the joystick by pressing enter, and then within 10 seconds, moving the joystick up, down, left, and right. This is very useful in the case of joystick drift. You can re-enter the menu by triple pressing power. We can select the system submenu for information regarding the firmware, as well as the option to adjust the language of the UI and to reset the handle to factory defaults. And lastly, you'll find the mode option, which will allow you to change between Nano 2 mode and Gimbal mode. And all that means is what the joystick is currently set to control, whether it is a DJI series gimbal or a Nucleus series motor. Now we're going to take a look at how to connect the control handle with the Nano 2 motors without the hand wheel. So to start, we're going to want to open up the menu by triple pressing the power button and navigating over to wireless and easy mode. And then we're going to connect one motor at a time, double pressing the function button, pressing enter. And then once more, double pressing the function button and pressing enter. So now our motors should be paired to the same channel as the controller. The next thing we'll need to do is navigate to motor, go down to wheel motor, and motor number. And in this case, we want this to control focus, which is currently set to the purple LED. I could either change the motor number if I want, but because this is already set to focus, I'm just gonna adjust this so it's motor number one. And then same thing for the joystick. I have this currently set to blue, which is motor number three. So I just want to adjust that so it's set to motor number three. And the last thing I'll need to do is navigate to the mode menu and make sure this is set to nano two mode so that the joystick will control a motor. From there, I can exit the menu and I should have focus control with the dial and zoom control with the joystick. Now we're gonna go over how to pair the control handle with the Nano 2 motors. All right, so in order to control the Nano 2 motors via the control handle, first we'll need to make sure both motors are paired to the hand wheel, and then we'll need to connect the hand wheel to the control handle. You also want to make sure that both the control handle and the hand wheel are set to the same channel. Next, we want to enter the menu by triple pressing the power button, going into function, and then selecting mode, and making sure that is set to Nano 2 mode in reference to what the joystick is set to control. From there, all we need to do is single press the function button on the motor to either green for iris or yellow for other. And then the dial on the handle is now set to control iris, while the joystick is set to control other. So we're going to take a look at how to pair the wireless control handle with a gimbal like the RS3 Pro. To start, we're going to open the menu of the control handle by triple pressing the power button, and then we'll enter the function menu. Then below wheel cal, we'll find our select mode. And you just want to make sure that that's set to G for gimbal mode. After that, it's going to be the same pairing process as many of our other controllers. Get back into the menu and select wireless, easy mode, double tap the pairing button on the wireless receiver, then press M to confirm. Once you exit the menu, you should now have full control of your RS2 or RS3 Pro. We're now going to take a look at how to update the firmware for the Nucleus Nano 2 hand wheel and motors. So in order to update the firmware for the Nano 2, the first thing we're going to need to do is connect to the internet through our connect option and then selecting Wi-Fi. We recommend connecting to a mobile hotspot as it is going to provide a stronger connection. Once you are connected 
to your Wi-Fi network, you will see the icon up in the top left of the corner, which lets you know that you're ready for the firmware update. So to access the firmware update page, swipe up in the main menu and navigate over to the system page where you'll see the firmware update option. Now there's a couple of different options here. The main thing to note is that each component of the Nano 2 kit has its own firmware with the motor and hand wheel being split into two separate pieces of firmware. Hand wheel M is going to refer to the main firmware for the handle, while hand wheel S is going to refer to all of the accessory firmware, which will all be updated through the hand wheel, referring to the motors or control handle or any other accessories that may come. The motor has its own firmware for camera control specifically, which is motor M, while it has firmware for the motor itself, referred to as motor S, and then the handle has its own firmware as well, which we'll go over at a later point. To update the firmware, all you need to do is check that there is an arrow pointing between an older firmware version and a newer firmware version, and then selecting the icon to the right. You'll get a short message. You can press confirm. And as you can see, the hand wheel is now updating. This is the same process for all of the other accessories, but the only thing to note when updating the motor is you will manually need to enter it into update mode. You can do so by unplugging your power source, holding the function button, and reinserting power to port 1. You'll know that the motor is in upgrade mode when the green LED is flashing. If the update fails to pass 2%, you'll need to power cycle the units and restart this process. We're now going to set up camera control for the Nucleus Nano 2 with the BMPCC 6K Pro. So in order to connect a camera like the Blackmagic Pocket 6K Pro to the Nano 2 via Bluetooth, first we're going to enter the menu of the 6K Pro, we're going to go to the setup page, and then we're going to navigate over to the Bluetooth menu. From there, we want to make sure Bluetooth is enabled, and we can also find the device name for this specific camera. On the hand wheel, we want to swipe up, select Connect, and then Bluetooth. We want to enable Bluetooth and enter the settings page. If you have connected to this device before, it should show up in this list. If not, you may need to search for it and enter a password. But all we need to do in this case is select the name and exit out of the menu. And you should see a Bluetooth icon at the top of the screen. You can now exit out of the page for the black magic. Swipe to the camera control page where you can adjust settings such as iris or ISO. We're now going to set up camera control for the Sony FX3 and FX30 with the Nucleus Nano 2. So in order to connect the Sony FX3 or FX30 to the Nucleus Nano 2 for camera control, the first thing you're going to want to do is open up the menu of the camera and under the network option, you're going to want to go to transfer and remote and make sure that PC remote function is turned on and set to be controlled via USB. You're also going to want to scroll down into the setup menu. And on the second page, you'll find an option for USB. You just want to make sure that the USB power supply is turned on. From there, you'll want to make sure that you have port number two available for your USB-C cable. You want to connect with a PD USB-C cable port number two into the USB-C port of your camera. And then all you need to do is swipe over on the main page. It should show FX3, and then you can select between the different options. You want to make sure that that is set to DF, otherwise you'll need to use the zoom rocker, and then simply turn the dial to make adjustments. We're now going to set up camera control for the Canon R8 with the Nucleus Nano 2. So when connecting Nano 2 to a camera like the Canon R8, uh, the only setting we need to adjust is choose the USB connection application and make sure that's set to photo import slash remote control. From there, we can exit out. Um, and then all we need to do is connect a USB-C cable from port two on the motor into the USB-C port on the camera. Then we can swipe to the camera control page. We should be able to change settings like f-stop or ISO. Now we're going to show how to set up four motors with the Nucleus Nano 2 hand wheel and control handle. 
So as you can see, we have a zoom lens with a motor on iris, zoom, focus, and then we also have our fourth motor on a mirage variable ND. So to start, you want to make sure everything is powered correctly. You want to run your power input into port two and then send power output from port one. And then you also want to connect the hand wheel to the control handle. Uh, in order to make sure these are communicating properly, you can adjust the dial, make sure your iris information is changing. You're going to want to make sure the control handle is set to TF for tilt of focus. From there, there's a few settings we're going to need to adjust. So we're going to enter the menu by triple pressing the power button. First, selecting wireless, and then going into 2.4G, and then channel. And you want to make sure that this is set to the same channel as the hand wheel in order for everything to function properly. From there, we want to back out and select the function menu, select mode, and make sure that is set to nano 2 mode, which will allow the joystick to control a motor as opposed to a gimbal. So once that's all set up, we're able to start the connection process, swiping up, selecting connect, 2.4G channel. We're gonna manually search channel two, and then we're gonna double press the function button on each motor, making sure that we wait for the motor to appear for selecting the next one. We can scroll to see if that, yep, bottom motor is connected and press confirm, give it one moment, and now we can calibrate the motors. You can do so by holding down the function button. However, with this many motors, we're gonna opt to calibrate each motor one at a time by holding the function button. If any issues arise while calibrating, you can always run another calibration. Now, all we need to do is assign the motors by single pressing the function button. We wanna make sure our iris is set to green, our focus is set to purple, our zoom is set to blue, our mirage motor is set to yellow. From there, we can now control the focus via the main wheel. We can control zoom via the zoom rocker. We can control iris via the dial on the control handle we can control our VND via the joystick. We're going to navigate over to the general settings page and select multiplier. So this is going to have two options for both the zoom rocker and for A and B points. To start, we're going to look at the zoom rocker. Uh, so at full speed, we can get an idea kind of of how quick the motor moves. And then if we were to adjust that down to its lowest setting, you can see that this is going to allow you to get significantly slower movement. There's also a setting in the multiplier submenu for range, which is going to apply to the A and B range on the focus throw. So at max speed, we're going to set a range, hold the A and B icon, and then tap to confirm. Now, it's not going to be affected if you are in TF mode as it will align each end of the throw with the hard stops on the wheel physically. So you will need to switch that into DF, which is going to allow it to spin at a full 360. Um, but just to give you an idea of how that speed is, it's a little bit snappier than it was in the previous mode. But if we swipe up and adjust that to as low as it can go, you can see that we now have a significantly slower throw, which is going to allow us to achieve more precise focus. So that was a brief overview of how the zoom functionality works in the Nano 2, as well as how multiplier can be used for your A and B point range. We're now going to pair the Nano 2 with components from the Nucleus M. Now we're taking a look at how to pair the Nano 2 motor with the Nucleus M Fizz. You can do this through the easy mode functionality, which can be accessed by holding the up and down arrow on the Fizz. Once you enter that menu, you can press enter to begin. And all you need to do is double click the function button on the motor you'd like to pair. Once it appears on the menu, press enter and press enter one more time. If you have 
your focus knob set to control motor one. You're going to want to make sure that this is set to purple, which is motor one, and then you should have native control. And then to pair a second motor, same process, hold the two arrow keys, press enter to begin, double press the function button. Once the motor appears, you can press enter, press enter. As you can see, we have this set to blue for zoom, which on the fizz is going to read as motor number three. So we have our zoom dial set to motor number three, which is going to allow you to adjust it via the zoom rocker. Keep in mind, you do have to pair one motor at a time, but the process is the same for multiple motors. So in this situation, we have two Nucleus M motors as well as the Nano 2 fizz unit. Uh, the pairing process is going to be a little bit different than when using the M fizz. However, it is still pretty straightforward. So looking at the main screen of the Nucleus M motor, uh, the main pieces of information we're looking for are the channel number and the motor number. We're going to want the channel numbers to be the same for both motors, and we're going to want the motor numbers to be different. We know that the Nano 2 hand wheel is automatically set to control motor number one for its main focus wheel, while the zoom rocker is set to motor number three. So that's what we're going to set here. We're going to set both of these motors to channel two by double pressing either the up or down arrow. And then to change the motor number, we can double press the menu button, navigate to motor number, select enter, and then bring that down to motor number one. You can press the power to exit out of the menu. As you can see, we now have both motors on channel number two. The front motor is set to motor number one, while the back motor is set to motor number three, meaning all I need to do is swipe up on the main screen select connect 2.4G channels, and then in manual mode, I can select channel two and then exit back out. You'll now see the channel number two is selected. The motors just jumped to resynchronize with the position of the hand wheel and I have control of focus via the dial and control of zoom via the rocker. We're now going to pair the Nucleus Nano 2 with components of the original Nucleus Nano. All right, so we're now gonna take a look at how to pair the Nano 1 motor with the Nano 2 hand wheel, and we're also gonna look at how to use the Nano 1 motor in conjunction with the Nano 2 motor. So to start, we're gonna pair our Nano 2 motor, same process as normal, navigate over to the connect page, 2.4G, channels, we're going to want to keep this in manual just so we know what channel we're setting this to. We're going to use channel 2 for this example. Press search, double tap the function button on the motor. Once it appears, press confirm. And then in order to set this to focus, we can single press the function button to purple, which is also motor number one. Now, if you're using your Nano 2 motor for focus, you're already set. The only other thing you'll need to do is adjust the channel number on the Nano 1 motor, you can do so by double tapping the arrow key. So I have this set to channel 2, which as you can see on the UI is the same as the hand wheel, meaning as I turn this dial, it should be controlling both motors. The trick with using the Nano 1 motor in conjunction with any of our Nucleus motors is that this will always be assigned to motor number 1, which is the same as the purple uh, light on the Nano 2 motor. So if I was theoretically using my Nano 2 for zoom, all I need to do, single press that function button, change it to blue. I would have zoom on the rocker, and then I would have focus with the Nano 1 motor. However, we realize in most situations, you're going to want to use this smaller motor on a smaller gearing, like maybe the Iris, and then the Nano 2 would be used on focus. So we're going to show you how to swap those in the settings. We're going to swipe up to the main page. We're going to navigate over to general settings and we're going to select the knob setting. So this is going to allow us to adjust what assigned motor the knob is set to control. Right now it's set to control focus, which is the purple LED and motor number one. So we're just going to adjust that so that it is set to control zoom. And then for the rocker, where it's currently assigned to other, we're going to change that so that it's set to control focus, which is motor number one, which is what that is permanently set to. So. If we did that correctly, they should jump to resync with their controllers, but we now are controlling our zoom motor, the Nano 2, via the hand wheel, and we're controlling our focus motor, the Nano 1, via the zoom rocker. Again, controlling iris with our zoom rocker and focus 
with the main dial. In order to pair the Nano 1 hand wheel with the Nano 2 motor, all you'll need to do is sync the channel numbers as the Nano 1 controller is only able to control motor number 1, which in this case is going to be the purple LED on the Nano 2 motor. So if you have the Nano 2 hand wheel, it's a bit easier to pair as you can select the channel number and then simply match it on the Nano 1 hand wheel. However, if you do not have the Nano 2 hand wheel, the only option is going to be manually scrolling through all 15 channels to see which one connects. So this is already set to purple, motor number one, so it should theoretically be controlled. We have channel zero, so I'm going to double tap the up arrow, change to channel number one, no communication, double tap channel number two. As you can see, this is now communicating, letting me know that this motor was on channel number two, and in the future, I will not need to scroll through the channels. We're now going to pair the Nucleus Nano 2 with the rear operating control handle. So in this setup, we have the Nano 2 motor uh, and we want to control it with the rear operating handle. So what we're going to do is we're going to open the menu, hold the button right above the focus wheel, select wireless, Z mode, and then double tapping the function button on the Nano 2 motor. Enter. Give it a moment to connect, and then you can exit out by single pressing that menu button. You're going to want to single press the function button until the LED is purple, signifying you're on motor number one for focus. And then you should have full control of the motor via the finger dial on the remote operating handle. We're now going to pair the Nucleus Nano 2 with the handles from the advanced ring grip. In order to connect the Nano 2 motor with the remote control handle on the ring grip, we're first going to need to open the menu by triple pressing the trigger, selecting wireless, and easy mode. Then we can double press the function button on the motor, select enter, and then exit by single pressing the trigger. And then we need to change the switch on the side of the handle from DF to TF, and then we should have full control via the focus dial. So for the dual channel wireless controller for the ring grip, the process is very similar. Uh, first, we're gonna wanna enter easy mode. This can be done either by holding the up arrow key, navigating to wireless, double clicking to enter, and selecting easy mode. However, you can use the power button to exit. You can also hold the up and down arrow at the same time to directly enter easy mode. From there, you can double press the function button on the nano motor, enter, use the power button to return to the main menu. And then as long as you have your motor set to purple for motor number one, you should be able to control it with the front focus dial. Natively, the focus dial is set to motor number one while the zoom dial is set to motor number two. If you need to change this, you can open up the menu, navigate to motor, and then either focus or zoom, then select number. This is gonna let you change it between motor number one, which is purple on the Nano 2, two, which is green, three, which is blue, and four, which is orange. We're now going to pair the Nucleus Nano 2 with the float controller. In order to pair the tilt to float controller with the Nano 2, you're first going to want to make sure that the switch in the back is set to TF as opposed to DF. Then you can enter the menu by triple pressing the sleep button on the bottom and navigating to the wireless menu page. Press M to enter easy mode. Then we're going to double tap the function button on the motor. When it appears on the screen, we can press M to enter. Give it just a moment, and then you can press sleep to exit out of this menu. And then as long as you have your motor set to the purple LED, we should have full control with the focus dial. We're now going to pair the Nucleus Nano 2 with components of the Mirage matte box. So now we're going to look at how to pair the Nano 2 hand wheel with the wireless motor of the Tilta Mirage. To start, you're going to want to make sure that they're both on the same channel. We can see based on the indicator on the home screen of the Nano 2, we're currently set to channel number two. 
However, the Mirage motor is set to channel zero. We can adjust this by double pressing either arrow key, and now they're on the same channel. However, we do not yet have control, and that's because the Nano 2 is natively set to control motor number one, while we are currently set to motor number four. So we can triple press either of the arrow keys to adjust this, and then single press. If we set this to motor number three, then we would be able to control this with the zoom rocker. We're going to leave that at motor number one so we can control it with the main focus dial. So we're going to triple press to exit. And now we have control of our variable ND. We're now going to take a closer look at how to pair the Nucleus Nano 2 motor with the wireless controller for the Mirage Mapbox. If you already own the Nano 2 hand wheel, it's a pretty simple process as all you'll need to do is set the channel number with the hand wheel for the motor and then match the channel number on the wireless controller. If you don't own the Nano 2 hand wheel, it's a bit more complicated, but still not too difficult. First, you'll need to single press the function button on the motor until the LED is purple, signifying that the motor is now set to motor number one, which is the only motor number the wireless controller is set to control. From there, you'll need to adjust the dial on the wireless controller to essentially find what channel the motor is set to. You can adjust the channel numbers by double pressing the arrows, and you'll essentially just need to scan through the 15 channels to find what the motor is set to. In this case, we're on motor number three, and I now have full control of the Nano 2 motor. That was an overview of the features and functionalities of the Nucleus Nano 2. Thank you very much for watching. Remember to follow us on our social media platforms, as well as tag us in any photos or videos that you take while using the system. You can also subscribe right here on YouTube to stay up to date with all things regarding the Nano 2. I'm Nick from Tilta. Thanks for watching.